Hello and welcome to Sleep In. Please listen to this recording somewhere safe to sleep. Take a nice deep breath in and let's begin. The Camel and the Pig A camel said, Nothing like being tall. See how tall I am. A pig who heard these words said, Nothing like being short. See how short I am. The camel said, Well, if I fail to prove the truth of what I said, I will give you my hump. The pig said, If I fail to prove the truth of what I have said, I will give up my snout. Agreed, said the camel. Just so, said the pig. They came to a garden enclosed by a low wall without any opening. The camel stood on this side the wall, and, reaching the plants within by means of his long neck, made a breakfast on them. Then he turned jeeringly to the pig, who had been standing at the bottom of the wall, without even having a look at the good things in the garden, and said, Now, would you be tall or short? Next they came to a garden enclosed by a high wall, with a wicket gate at one end. The pig entered by the gate, and, after having eaten his fill of the vegetables within, came out, laughing at the poor camel, who had had to stay outside, because he was too tall to enter the garden by the gate, and said, Now, would you be tall or short? Then they thought the matter over, and came to the conclusion that the camel should keep his hump and the pig his snout, Observing, tall is good, where tall would do, of short, again, it is also true. The Man and His Piece of Cloth A man in the east, where they do not require as much clothing as in colder climates, gave up all worldly concerns and retired to a wood, where he built a hut and lived in it. His only clothing was a piece of cloth which he wore round his waist. But, as ill luck would have it, rats were plentiful in the wood, so he had to keep a cat. The cat required milk to keep it, so a cow had to be kept. The cow required tending, so a cowboy was employed. The boy required a house to live in, so a house was built for him. To look after the house a maid had to be engaged. To provide company for the maid a few more houses had to be built and people invited to live in them. In this manner a little township sprang up. The man said, The further we seek to go from the world and its cares, the more they multiply. The sea, the fox, and the wolf A fox that lived by the seashore once met a wolf that had never seen the sea. The wolf said, What is the sea? It is a great piece of water by my dwelling, said the fox. Is it under your control? asked the wolf. Certainly, said the fox. Will you show me the sea? Then, said the wolf. With pleasure, said the fox. So the fox led the wolf to the sea, and said to the waves, 
Now go back. They went back. Now come up. And they came up. Then the fox said to the waves, My friend, the wolf, has come to see you. So you will come up and go back till I bid you stop. And the wolf saw, with wonder, the waves coming up and going back. He said to the fox, May I go into the sea? As far as you like. Don't be afraid, for, at a word, the sea would go or come as I bid, and as you have already seen. The wolf believed the fox, and followed the waves rather far from the shore. A great wave soon upset him, and threw up his carcass on the shore. The fox made a hearty breakfast on it, saying, The fool's ear was made for the knave's tongue. The Birds and the Lime A fowler in the east once went to a wood, scattered some grain on the ground, spread a net over it with some lime in it, and was watching from a distance to see what luck would attend his efforts. A great many birds assembled on the trees around the net, and said, What fine corn that is! We can seldom hope to get anything like it. An owl that was close by said, how nice that white thing in the net is. What is it? said the birds. Why? It is our best friend in the world. It is lime. When it holds us in its embrace, we can never hope to get away. The birds left the place at once. Said the fowler, a clever bird knows the lime. The Raven and the Cattle One evening, as some cattle were wending their way home, a raven rode on the horns of a bull in the herd, and as he approached the cottage, cried to the farmer, Friend, my work for the day is over. You may now take charge of your cattle. What was your work? asked the farmer. Why, said the raven, the arduous task of watching these cattle and bringing them home. Am I to understand you have been doing all the work for me? said the farmer. Certainly, said the raven, and flew away with a laugh. Quoth the farmer with surprise, How many there are that take credit for things which they have never done? Tinsel and Lightning A piece of tinsel on a rock once said to a pebble, You see how bright I am, I am by birth related to the lightning. Indeed, said the pebble, then accept my humble respects. Some time after, a flash of lightning struck the rock, and the tinsel lost all its brilliancy by the scorching effects of the flash. Where is your brilliancy now? said the pebble. Oh! It is gone to the skies, said the tinsel, for I have lent it to the lightning that came down a moment ago to borrow it of me. Dear me, said the pebble, how many fibs doth good bragging need? The Ass and the Watchdog 
A watchdog in a village was barking all night to keep thieves off from his master's house. An ass, who observed this, thought that the dog amused himself by barking. So he brayed all night. When the day dawned, the owner of the ass thought the poor animal had been suffering from some disorder. Therefore he sent for the village doctor and laid the case before him. The doctor examined the animal closely and said, Friend, you must brand this ass forthwith, else he will soon go into fits and die. The ass said, I assure you nothing is wrong with me. I simply amused myself last night. Oh, no, said the inexorable leech. I know what the wily brute means. He would rather die and make you the loser than be branded and recover his health. So they bound the ass with ropes and branded him all over with red-hot irons. Some time after the ass moved out to see how the village had fared during his illness. The dog asked why he had been branded. The ass narrated the story. Quoth the dog, He that mistakes work for amusement must pay for his error. The Lark and Its Young Ones A child went up to a lark and said, Good lark, have you any young ones? Yes, child, I have, said the lark, and they are very pretty ones indeed. Then she pointed to them and said, This is fair wing, that is tiny bill, and that other is bright eye. The child said, Yes, at home, we are three, myself and my two sisters, Jane and Alice, and Mama says we are pretty little children, and that she is very fond of us. To this the little larks replied, Oh yes, Mama is very fond of us too. Then the child said, Good lark, will you send home Tiny Bill to play with me? Before the lark could reply, Bright I said, Yes, if you will send little Alice to play with us in our nest. The child said, Oh, Alice will be so sorry to leave home and come away from Mama. Bright. I said, Tiny Bill will be so sorry to leave our nest and go away from Mama. The child was abashed and went home, saying, Oh, everyone is fond of home. The Two Gems a despot in the east once said to his fawning courtiers, He that goes round my kingdom in the shortest possible time shall have one of these two gems. A courtier went round the king and said, Sire, may I have the prize? How so, said the king. Why, you are the kingdom. Are you not? said the courtier. The despot was so well pleased with the courtier that he gave him both the gems. The other courtiers said, in a whisper, flatterers prey upon fools. <laughs>